Welcome back to chemical bonding. Seems like it will never end, right? <laughs> and there's a lot, to, lot going on with chemical bonding, and because that's a real basic um, concept in chemistry. Because when we react things, we're either going to make bonds or break bonds. So it's important that we understand this. Now, what we're going to do in part six is we're going to look at shapes, the three-dimensional shapes of molecules and how we can identify those just based on some characteristics of the formulas. Structure denotes function and function denotes structure. If you've ever had a had an anatomy and physiology or an or a biology class, that's so true. We can rearrange carbons and hydrogens and nitrogens in lots of different ways and form lots of different compounds. And so the properties of molecular substances depend on the structure. And the structure is the skeletal arrangements, what kind of bonds, and then the shape of the molecule. If you think back to enzymes, if you've ever looked at enzymes before, you can have an enzyme made, but until it forms that final structure, it won't be active because the actual structure, the shape of it, is what is going to denote its function. And so bonding theory is what we use to predict the shape of molecules. And we call it VSEPR. Okay, it's V-S-E-P-R, but we call it VSEPR because it's just easier to say. So um, when you when you see this, this is where we're going to be doing the three-dimensional shapes. So molecular geometry is the actual shape, and that's what we're trying to get to, the actual three-dimensional shape. Um, and they have bond angles that um, denote what types of shapes they are. Lewis predicts the regions where the electrons are, but it can't account for the shape of the molecule. And we have to have bond theory for that. Because remember, when we put these electrons around this central atom, first of all, they're in a cloud three-dimensionally around the nucleus. And second of all, you've got that repulsion between the electrons. And they're going to try to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. And that's, this repulsion is what can cause a change in the shape. So VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. See why we call it VSEPR. Um, and so basically you have electron groups around a central atom. And you want to see where they're going to be most stable. And most stable is going to be the, where the electrons are as close to the central atom as they can be, but as far away from each other as they can be as well. And the resulting arrangement allows us to predict the shapes based on bond angles. So we need to define something first. And, and you're going to see some of this in your lab number five, um, the molecular shapes lab. And there's a handout. And then there's also um, a Blackboard video where Dr. Hendricks goes through this whole procedure with you. Um, Lewis structure predicts how many valence electron pairs are going to be around the central atom. If you have a lone pair, that's one electron group. So a lone pair that's not being shared with anything is one electron group. Each bond is going to be one electron group, but it doesn't matter if it's a single, a double, or a triple bond, that's one group. So it's like a bonding group. So for example, we've got NO2 minus here, and you're only looking at the central atom. Okay, we're only looking at the central atom. So in this central atom, you have one lone pair, you have one single bond, and then you have one double bond. So that has three electron groups. Only around the central atom. It doesn't matter if it's a multiple bond, it's still one group. And then if it has lone pairs, it's one group. So NO2 minus has three electron groups. 
And that's all you have to know to know the electronic shape, the electronic geometry. There are five of these, okay? Linear, trigonal, planar, tetrahedral, bipyramidal, and octahedral. And they're based on a maximum of six bonding electron groups around the central atom. Now there can be more than that, but it's super rare. So we're just looking at what normal is, okay? Um, and so I've got individual slides for these, but at the end I'm going to show you kind of a summary slide that I've got in that Lab 5 material for you to look at. So if you have two electrons, then you're going to have a linear geometry, okay, and your bond angles are going to be 180 degrees. If you have three electron groups, you're going to have um, trigonal planar geometry. If you have four electron groups, you're going to have tetrahedral geometry. If you have five electron groups, you're going to have trigonal bipyramidal. And if you have six electron groups, you're going to have octahedral, which is two square base pyramids stacked on top of each other. So this is, this is kind of like the summary chart for this. So if you have two electron groups, your electronic geometry is going to be linear. If you have three, it's just going to be trigonal planar, four, tetrahedral, five, trigonal bipyramidal, six, octahedral, period. Only defined by electron groups. The molecular geometry, however, is going to be dictated by the formula, the number of elements around it, and if you have any lone pairs, unshared pairs, okay, that's going to make a difference between the electronic and the molecular geometry. If you don't have an unshared pair, then electronic and molecular are going to be the same. But if you have an unshared lone pair of electrons, that's going to change the shape. So when you look at the geometry of NO3 minus, all right, and we've, we've drawn the Lewis structure for you here, what is the electronic geometry? Because you've got to know that first. The electronic geometry, how many bonding or how many electron groups do you have? You have one, two, three, right? So you have three electron groups, which means it must be trigonal planar. What does that look like? It looks like a triangle on the page, okay? Trigonal planar. All right, and you've got the end here, and then it's going to be connected to the O's like that. So it's tri trigonal planar means a triangle, okay? What is the molecular shape of this? How do I tell that? I look, one thing I can do is I can look back at my sheet and I can say, okay, and we, we, we're doing something called an AB formula. I have A for the central atom And then B, it's like the generic formula. It's connected to three things, so it's an AB3 formula. Now I know it doesn't have any unshared or lone pairs, so that tells me that the molecular and the electronic geometry are going to be the same, trigonal planar. And if I look back at my chart, it has three trigonal planar, AB3, so the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. And then I gave you one to do, that's CCL4 carbon tetrachloride. 
All right, and that's your introduction to Vesper.